Next, Prince Harry has become the first senior member of the royal family to give evidence uh, at court for 130 years after taking to the witness stand in his civil case against Mirror Group newspapers. Uh, he's accused the publisher of using unlawful methods, including phone hacking, to get stories about him, something they deny. Our media editor, Katie Razzle, has been following uh, the case at the High Court in London and sent this report. In a cul-de-sac in central London, the world's media. Focused on itself and one man. Others have settled claims over the years, but here was Prince Harry, determined to have his day in court. Telling those inside a packed Court 15 and an overflow annex that every single article written about him had caused him distress, and agreeing he had felt hostility to the media even before he knew about their methods. He was asked about this line in his witness statement. How much more blood will stain their typing fingers before someone can put a stop to this madness? Prince Harry told the court he was talking about journalists responsible for causing a lot of pain, upset, the press in general. Asked if he was in the witness box to put a stop to this madness, he replied, that is my hope. Harry's case is that specific articles in Mirror Group newspapers from 1996 to 2011 were based on phone hacking and other unlawful information gathering, often by private investigators. Today he's been questioned about them in detail. He says the journalist behind this story, about a visit from his mother on his 12th birthday, was a known user of private investigators. MGN's barrister told him journalists could not have hacked his mobile phone as he didn't have one back then. Harry replied, it could have been my mother's. How could journalists know he was at the particular pub as reported in this article, Prince Harry asks. Isn't it likely the celebrity chef owner contacted the paper, Mr Green suggested? And MGN's barrister told him this story of a thumb injury had already been reported by the Press Association the day before. Harry claims that just encouraged others to take stories further using illicit methods for that extra information. He says he was often teased at school after these kind of articles. It caused him paranoia and distress, led him to dump friends, even to distrust his own brother William when a disagreement leaked. MGN denies phone hacking and unlawful information gathering for the articles under scrutiny in a civil trial on which a judge, not a jury, will decide, explains this lawyer. On the balance of probabilities, is it more likely than not that the Mirror uh, engaged in phone hacking? Or is it more likely than not that they didn't, that they're weighing up just to see where that balance tilts? So it's a slightly different standard, a lower standard, if you like. The Prince also had sharp words for the former Daily Mirror editor, now TV presenter Piers Morgan, saying he makes him physically sick and that he wants to hold him and others accountable for their vile behaviour. Mr Morgan denies wrongdoing. It's been an intense day for Prince Harry, the first time a senior royal has been cross-examined in more than a century. And there's more to come. So, joining me now, Jonathan Code, media lawyer. Thanks very much for coming on the programme. You're welcome. So, a big day, lots to pick through. Let's hand it over to you. You've gone through the evidence. Uh, what stuck out to you today? Well, it's difficult to know where to start because of this so <laughs> seismic. I suppose we must start with Harry's own witness statement. One of the extraordinary things about this case is that it's a claim for privacy, essentially, that the, his privacy has been invaded by the unlawful gathering of information. But in order to bring this case, of course, he's had to set out in his witness statement all sorts of things, which, which I'm sure he didn't want to put in there. But he's really set out his manifesto in that extraordinary document. He, he's set out what he's trying to do. As far as he's concerned, this country is blighted with a, with a, a press which is completely uh, um, irresponsible and completely unaccountable. And he's made it his mission to take this on. And his cross-examination was essentially the, the attempt by the Mirror to, to defeat him, because we've got two powerful entities here. We've got a warrior prince, and we've got a very powerful, um, a very powerful media organisation going head to head. Well, Jonathan, I'm, I'm fascinated by what you said there, because his his general manifesto, which people watching at home may or may not agree with, given certainly his you know his own personal circumstances and his personal history but this court case isn't about general principles is it he's it's about demonstration that certain stories were accessed in a certain way that's what needs to to come out of it 
Well, you know, but that's absolutely right. But as far as he's concerned, um, he's fighting a larger battle. Yes, this case is straightforward. As Susan Aslan, you interviewed earlier, or oddly enough, I was her trainee, explained mm-hmm. that, it, that the judge has to decide on a balance of probabilities whether claims make good or not. But I think it's important to say that in Harry's case, he's got 33 articles. Well, he wins the case if he wins on only one of them. The mirror loses, if it, you know, even if they knock out 32, Harry is still won. So, yes, there is an important issue here. But so far as Harry is concerned, it's clear from his witness state this is part of a bigger mission to try and hold the press to account in a way which no one else really has the power to do because they only have the status or the money. So he's fighting the, the corner of the rest of all the lots of other people okay. who suffer press abuse. And what do you think about his performance, as much as you can gather from it, actually answering those questions from the barrister? Well, I think he did really well. I mean, first of all, he didn't rise he didn't rise to being angry about anything. He was calm and, and collected all the way through. He did all the right things by just answering the, the question. Um, he, I don't think he was really wrong-footed, but importantly... Uh, on but one particular moment, I think he did pat- really well because a, a barrister said, "Well, what about this article? What is there in this article which suggests that you're you you were the subject of unlawful information gathering?" He said, "Well, it's the flight details. The flight details. That's a security issue. Now, no one is going to find that out legitimately. It has to have been blagged, and and that seemed to be to be something which the case he had no answer for." Fascinating. Uh, day two coming up. 10.30, uh, I think you'll be back in there. What are you looking out for? Well, I think the most important part of the day is not the morning, but the afternoon. I mean, the, the, the morning will be much the same. The, the, the KC trying to uh, undermine uh, the Prince's case and his evidence, and it won't be very different from the whole of today. It's The explosions are going to be in the afternoon when the one um, mirror journalist who's been prepared to turn up and answer questions is going to be cross-examined by David Sherborne. Now, David Sherborne was the man who destroyed Rebecca Vardy in the Wag of the Christie case and reduced her to tears twice. Now, I can't imagine he's going to be any more gentle to this mirror journalist. So I think, you know, the sparks are going to be much more in the afternoon than the morning. Fascinating. Thank you very much for marking our card for us. Jonathan Code, great to speak to you. Thank you.